I'll get lunch ready. What have you done your hair and teeth? A big day today. Oh, yeah. oh what are you getting into? Meet Mr. and Mrs. Jones from Sydney. Hello. Their family. What have you found there? And their million dollar mortgage. I'm Bev. I'm Steve. Uh, we live in Willoughby. We have about a $1 million mortgage. We feel like okay about it, it's not great, but we wanted to have um, our own home. Okay, we'll go do your hair. At the time we were looking to buy, prices just kept going up and up and up. We ended up having to spend more than what we really wanted to. I work full time um, and Bev works, uh, runs her own consultancy. So we had Rory and he's 14 months old. I've worked um, every day thereafter, so I didn't take a break. Costs do blow out sometimes um, because you have unforeseen things, but we do have enough buffer that we can cover those costs. <laughs> Everyone has their own definition of what well off is. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily describe ourselves as that, but I definitely no. think we're sort of comfortable. If going into debt was an Olympic sport, Australia would have a lot to be proud of. Here's household debt as a percentage of income. Where gold medalists are taking out loans. Now this happened for a few reasons. When money is cheap, people borrow it. The Reserve Bank of Australia has cut interest rates 15 times. The cash rate is now just 0.75%. On top of that, the government gives you a tax deduction for any losses you make from borrowing to invest in property. That's called negative gearing. And if that wasn't enough, the banks became sales organisations, flogging credit like used cars. So guess what? We borrowed like crazy. And we bought real estate. During the week, Joel Cathavala works in finance, but on the weekends, he often drives an Uber. And do you think you'll, um, you'll be inclined to add to the housing debt of the nation at some point? There's still quite a long uh, way for me to go in terms of being able to save up uh, enough for a deposit. And did your parents own their own home when you were growing up? Yeah, yes they did. So uh, I think that was something that was pretty important to them um, and something that was communicated to them quite uh, quite early uh, when they came to Australia. It is literally a house of cards. We've got household debt to income at just a touch under 200%, and that, in my view, is a, is a massive macro risk. Why are Australian households so indebted? Because we've gone out there and bought houses. Not built new houses, but bought established homes and pushed them up to what is, by global standards, amongst the most expensive houses in the world. The problem with debt is you have to be able to pay it back. What makes economies fragile is if the debt can't be serviced. And that normally, in the case of households, is directly linked to unemployment and the prospect of having a job. Wages aren't growing very quickly, that's true. But interest rates are at historic low levels as well. At the same time as throwing money at property investors, the banks are reluctant to lend to small business, unless you put your house up as security. My name is Luke Chant and my company is Hotwire Heating. We import underfloor heating and heated tower rails. We started Hotwire uh, 15 years ago uh, in Australia. Um, at the time, people didn't really know what floor heating was. I've got a profitable little business. It's turned a profit um, every year except the GFC where we broke even that year. But the banks just simply won't lend, uh, won't lend against that at all. Luke Chant's Melbourne company has to pay for its imported stock up front it may have to wait up to six months before the stock is sold by retailers, and it eventually gets paid. His bank used to help him bridge that gap, but in 2014, that changed. I woke up one morning to find that the, uh, the bank um, had just closed my trade finance facility. The bank had decided that all the unsecured finance facilities, they were just closing, uh, and they closed ours without bothering to tell us they were doing so. These days, to pay for its stock, the company has to borrow from a non-bank lender at a high rate of interest. Luke says this year those interest payments have cost more than $20,000. 
twenty thousand dollars is is half a, a junior admin person. I could hire another whole person if I had a better finance facility. It really holds back the business from from growth. It means I get stuck in the office doing admin when I could be out uh, generating sales and speaking to customers, but I'm I'm doing something I could pay someone a lot less for. Everybody knows that the small business grows the economy. If you walk through my industrial park here, there's 44 units in here, they're all small businesses. Uh, and we're not getting a fair go from the, from the banks at the moment. My message to the banks is you've got to give small businesses a go. Do you think that the banks and CBA in particular have been focusing too much on housing uh, and not enough on business? I mean, we're very focused on both of those. Clearly, uh, housing's been a big part of economic growth and both the construction in terms of property development as well. But business is, is equally as important. Uh, we lend about $500 million every week. I mean, arguably, we, we should be lending more. We're certainly trying to find areas of the economy where we can lend more. We think that's it's quite uh, reasonable to expect that particularly where we're looking for greater growth in in parts of the economy at the moment that the banking system should be should be being asked to really step up to the plate and make sure that they're lending uh, to any credit worthy business and that's that's a big focus for us and it should be the boss of Australia's biggest bank Matt Common accepts that Australia's household debt is high I think household debt is very high uh, and you compare that internationally. If you look though at a number of other factors, particularly where interest rates are now, if you look at serviceability of that debt, we're seeing more than three quarters of our customers are well ahead of their repayments. So we don't have any concerns uh, in the context of the overall health of that, uh, of that debt and for customers being able to repay that. Obviously that's contingent on interest rates remaining low, which I think under any scenario, interest rates are gonna remain very low uh, for the foreseeable future. But you've said in testimony that uh, greed played a part in what happened to Commonwealth Bank as well. Whose greed was it? Well, I think when you look at some of the incidents that, that were well covered in the context of uh, the Royal Commission, particularly the, the charging of, uh, of fees to, to customers for advice services that they didn't provide, I mean, quite simply, that was a failure on behalf of uh, the bank and other institutions. And so I think there's just instances where we didn't look hard enough. No, but I'm wondering who's we? I mean, does it go to the top? Well, I think it goes the to- The greed all... was, was, was the, the top of CBA greedy? Well, I think it goes to all parts of the organisation and the industry. But if you conclude that, well, why weren't these things detected as the Commissioner Hayne did? I think it was reasonable as he did in both, certainly in the interim report, to conclude that greed must have pay, played a part. And uh, you know, the industry was doing well during that period of time and that dulled the senses and people didn't look hard enough. But the banks didn't do this all on their own. They had successive governments to help them. One of the major candidates is what I consider the, the misty regulation of the banking system. Uh, we put in a whole lot of cockeyed incentives for the banks. Um, plus, housing has always been a tax advantaged uh, way to invest. But from a policymaker's perspective, you'd have to sit back and go, what were they thinking? What do you think of the banks these days? I think the older generation perhaps trusts the banks and are more loyal to the banks than us. We're sort of more happy to to shop around and, and change if we need to. Do you think that when you get a mortgage, it won't be one of the big banks? In all likelihood, it probably won't be one of the big banks. The pressure on the banks has not abated. The government has accused them of profiteering and appointed the ACCC to investigate the fact that they're not passing on the full RBA cash rate cuts. This chart shows the problem, the growing gap between the average bank mortgage rate and the cash rate. It's prima facie evidence that the banks are keeping back some of the cash rate cuts. But it's a bit more complicated than that because the RBA cash rate doesn't really represent what it costs the banks to get the money to provide a mortgage. Being the world's debt record holder and focusing credit mainly on housing has made the Australian economy fragile, unable to withstand another recession. It's causing consumers to spend less and retailers already trying to deal with online shopping to suffer and close. The CEO of JB Hi-Fi is on the retail front line. 
I certainly think high street retail has been struggling for a while now, and they, but you know, the, those sites have been replaced by cafes or, or gyms, whereas you're seeing homemaker centres continue to grow, and you know, JB obviously does pretty well in shopping centres. How do you feel about the Australian economy? I think we do a great job of talking it down. I mean, we've got low interest rates, low unemployment, we've got a great standard of living. We just, we need to be more productive. I think the high debt levels are only a problem if people lose their jobs or the economy takes a hit. And as I've always thought about when I've been buying or selling a house, you, you know, you tend to buy and sell in the same markets. I want to go for a loan for a house. I'm sick of renting. Carly Sutton is raising four kids on her own in the outer suburbs of Melbourne. She watches every cent she spends at the shops. There's no discretionary spending here. Yeah, once I've put petrol in the car, paid for childcare, paid for the school fees, then I've got all my bills. At the end of each month, she gets a lift across town to shop at the member-only warehouse Costco, where everything comes in bulk. It's all lamb, so you've got your lamb cutlets, you, you've got two legs of lamb, your chops. That'll last me, again, a month. After her bills are paid, Carly usually has just $70 a week to spend on food. I come with a list. I come with a list. There may be one or two things that I might put extra in the trolley. Four kids, 70 bucks a week? Yes, I can do it. That's pretty good. Do you think you'll ever not struggle? I'm hoping not, but I would like to not struggle, say, every couple of months. So if battlers with little disposable income like Carly are scrimping to borrow a multiple of their incomes, and Australia is already the world record holder in the debt to income ratio stakes, what will happen next? I guess a benign scenario would be perhaps a small little correction, not unlike what we've had. I think we'd be pretty lucky to get away with that because these uh, house prices are now at such high level. You better have your fingers crossed and hope we don't have a recession for the next 10 years because that's how long it's going to take. If we do have a recession in that interim period, wow, uh, housing is real, really a risk that will intensify the downturn if it starts. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.